Hi Astro Addicts, in this video I want to discuss a very interesting filter for Astro Photography. The IDAS Nebula Booster 1, a multi narrowband filter used with one-shot color cameras. There are lots of different filters used in this hobby, some of them aim to remove light pollution, others are even stronger and try to isolate a specific wavelength of light. Most of the light pollution filters are broadband filters, but these ones right here are narrowband filters. By isolating these most important wavelengths, we are able to create some different images, different from RGB, narrowband images. And now it's getting interesting. Since narrowband filters only give you one color, they are best used with monochrome cameras. And the broadband filters, which give you an entire spectrum, minus the light pollution, are best used with color cameras, to get a color image in one shot. But how about using a narrowband filter with a one-shot color camera? The purpose of this filter is to produce a color image from basically narrowband wavelengths, because there are multiple in there. You can either edit this data as a basic RGB image, or use maybe an HOO processing, as I did in the last tutorial, to create some more intricate images. Let's talk more about the IDAS Nebula Booster. This filter isolates HA, O3, HB and S2, the most important out of these four being HA and O3. Let me show you some example images and discuss their quality. All of these images have been taken with a dedicated astronomy camera, the ZWO ASI 294 MC Pro, a cool dedicated camera. The Crescent Nebula was the first target I tried out with that filter. The original plan was to create a hybrid image that consisted out of RGB data from a broadband filter and separated HA and O3 data from this filter. While the HA was incredibly strong, the O3 data was very faint, but visible. I tried out these separation algorithms in APP, which did not go as planned. The H and O3 images looked different, but the O3 could have been much stronger with a dedicated narrowband filter. But to be honest, this nebula is a very challenging O3 target. Here we can see that stronger O3 targets can definitely be enhanced. The oxygen lies in the center of the nebula, and I was able to draw some of this out to turn this basic HA target into a more advanced experience. This image definitely shows the purpose of this filter. With 4 minute exposures, I was able to capture a stunning amount of HA data on the whole set. With a good color correction, this image looks so much like a true RGB image. Which is even more incredible, if you consider that I was imaging close to Frankfurt Airport, Portal 9. Again, this example shows that common nebula targets can be enhanced with a blue channel. With this filter, you are able to shoot two wavelengths at the same time, to a good extent. You will be able to shoot nebula targets through the heaviest of light pollution and, maybe most important, on a full moon. The blue channel is acceptable on bright targets, but a dedicated O3 filter will do much better. Furthermore, there are lots of editing possibilities with this kind of data. The easiest way would be to process it as RGB data, just put it in Deep Sky Stacker or APP and make the stacking. Very easy. Another technique, if you use AstroPixel processor, you can split the channels into HA and O3 and create an HOO image. And at last, you can use the black body extinction color calibration method in APP to create a very interesting, almost fiery looking look. Just like this. Since its name is Nebula Booster, I tried to use it on galaxies. And failed horribly. Using HA data to improve your galaxy images is definitely possible, but I'd rather use a dedicated HA filter for that. I've tried to image Andromeda Galaxy with this filter and… yeah. These were long 5 minute exposures and there is hardly any red detail there. Don't use a Nebula filter on galaxies. All in all, this is a great nebula filter. You can use it with dedicated cameras and with modified DSLRs. 
to get nebula targets through the heaviest of light pollution. You will most likely see not that much blue, which is a bit disappointing, but it works. On galaxies, hell no. Get a broadband filter or a dedicated HA filter to improve your signal in that way. Comparing it to other multi-narrowband filters, this filter is on the lower end, regarding quality and price. Comparable filters like the Optolong L Enhance, L Extreme or the Triad Ultra will produce better images, but their price is way higher. If you're just getting into narrowband imaging or you want to try a one-shot color filter in this way, the Eidos Nebula Booster is a great choice. There are multiple versions of this filter, I know of the NB1, 2 and 3, and I think the NBX will be coming out soon. For more data on those, maybe look on the IDOS website to choose the best one for you. The weather has been horrible for I think the past 3 months. It started to snow again as I can see. I haven't had any clear skies since November. And I'm really tired of clouds, really. In the meantime, I try to do some different things for the channel and also my exams are again coming in February and I think I cannot make that many videos in that time, maybe some more live streams. If you want more astro imaging in your life, you can check out the Discord server I set up for the community, link in the description. And I was able to create a merchandise store, you can look at my stuff in the description. I even have a small... Well, put Galaxy in there. And as for me, my name is Tim, I'm an Astro Addict, I wish you clear skies, and may the night be with us. It's really cold in here.